Last week's Sanford International Golf Tournament had thousands of spectators putting in some serious miles walking the course as they followed the PGA champions. And as more of us get active and stay active, we're putting extra strain on our knees and hips. The resulting pain has some people wondering what can be done to ease joint pain and when they should start thinking about joint replacement. As Brittany Kay found out during the Sanford International Tournament, the answer may be sooner than you think. Thank you so much, Dr. Timothy Walker, for joining us here today. Thank you. Glad to be here. So we're talking about joint health and joint pain and people struggling with this. So what role do joints play in our life? How important is this? It's important in everything you do. You need a, a joint to move. So anytime you move, there's a joint moving. So everything you do in life has a problem, or if you have a problem with a joint, it will be manifested. Is this a pretty common thing? Are a lot of people struggling with joint pain? Lots of people, and it's becoming an increasing problem as our population continues to age. And this isn't just for seniors, though. The demographic has kind of changed, so tell me about that. Oh, absolutely. People younger and younger are having problems with their joints all the time. And it has to do with a lot of people getting involved in athletics at an earlier age and being more involved later in life as well. And so I feel like, especially as we're younger, we have that thought of, oh, we might be having pain right now, it's gonna get better, but how important is it to talk to your doctor about this pain if you're having it? Well, very, because you can do a lot of preventative work in order to save your joint for later as well. So discussing your joint pain with your doctor can prevent future problems. Okay, so preventative work, what does this include? Body maintenance, range of motion, strength protects your joints. Things that can happen in your joint that may not need a joint replacement that can also be uh, at least corrected um, before it becomes a bigger problem can be done in a lot of physicians' hands. So tell me about the Mako robotic arm assisted surgery and how this differs from the manual hip or knee replacements. Well, it adds technology to our procedure. We use our same techniques in balancing joints, uh, but with a robotic assisted surgery, we can use technology to plan the joint, have our sizes, have our gaps a little bit better managed, and hopefully that will result in longer, better lasting joints in the future. So how long has this been around for? Well, it, the technology has been developed over the last eight years, and in Sioux Falls, we've been using it for the last two to three. So what have you heard from patients who have had this the make a robotic arm assisted surgery? Well, a lot of this, the results that we're getting early on, um, people enjoy it. And I don't know if it is the fact that they've had new technology or if there's a true benefit overall to using the assisted surgery. It does decrease what I would call our outlier patients, patients that may not have quite the right alignment that then trans, um, transitions to their better functional outcome. So how does this procedure exactly work? Well, it, uses a CET scan in addition to our normal templating views and it allows us to better surgically plan. With that, the robotic assisted arm allows us to make our cuts a little bit more precise in a three-dimensional plane. So we're here at the PGA Tour, the Sanford International, and we're at the Striker, so mobility zone. Here. So tell me what this zone offers and what we can find in here. Oh, sure. Well, this zone offers um, a little game, truly, but it's a joint um, educational place. Um, it shows what our true implants are for a partial knee, a total knee, and a total hip replacement actually look like and where they go in the body. So what are three things that people will learn going through this? Well, number one, to take care of your joint, you should maintain your range of motion, your strength to increase your function, and a simple thing to do in regards to helping your joint health would be weight reduction. So having this here at the Sanford International, why is this a great place to come and share the knowledge? Well, people that are walking around the course, many people have joint pain and problems. Um, when you're functionally out here, you're going to be healthy, better lifestyle, and enjoying it. And now you can look and find some easy techniques in order to stay healthy. So what are some things that we could incorporate into our daily lives, even if we aren't experiencing this joint pain, so that we don't in the future? Healthy lifestyle, normal exercise, stretching, and watch what you eat. So normal exercise is a good thing, but sometimes it's the exercise that can cause the joint pain? A, a joint that is painful can be injured with exercise, but a stiff, painful joint is more problematic than a joint that has good range of motion that is also painful. 
So if we're having joint pain and we need to have this Mako assisted arm surgery or something done to our joints to fix it and we just kind of skip over it and keep going about our daily lives, what can happen? You're going to get weaker and your function is going to decline to the point where you're missing out on a lot of the activities you may enjoy. So what are the main causes or what is the main cause for this joint pain? The main cause is swelling and then you can have mechanical issues where the bone is rubbing on bone or you can have things within inside the joint such as a loose body, a piece of bone that is broken off or a meniscus in the knee. Labrum in the hip can also cause joint pain. Overall weakness and alignment issues can also cause it. Do you know any statistics for how many people in the younger demographic are having these surgeries? Uh, I do not know the exact demographics, but I know in my personal um, practice the number of patients in their 60s, 50s, and 40s has dramatically increased in the 14 years that I've been here at Sanford. What do you see for the future when it comes to this? Well, I think more and more people are going to be going through um, joint replacement surgery, and that it'll continue to happen in patients at younger age with expectations of higher function and less pain than any generation before. Right now, I, I think the surgery you know, perspective, what we can do to make things better is use the data that we're obtaining using robotics and the immediate feedback of the soft tissues with the surgeon um, to make a better implant, leg lengths, and a natural feel. And since we are here at the San Bernardino National and this is a PGA golf tour, is this something that you find a lot in golfers? Absolutely. Um, I have lots of patients that come in about the tweak in their knee when they're, they're going through their swing, that the, it really it twinges either their hip or their knee. The activity of people, especially as they continue to mature through their lives, go to less impact activities. They're not running as much, but they're certainly trying to walk. So it's an activity that you can carry out throughout your life. So naturally, as you age, you're going to have more percentages of people in those sports that are going to have troubles. All right, great information. Thank you so much, Dr. Timothy Walker, for joining us today. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. It's important to have a conversation with your doctor about joint health and pain you may be experiencing. Every patient's journey is unique, and it's important to start a conversation about making a plan now. Stryker provides the official joint replacement products for the PGA Tour. If you'd like to learn more about Stryker and Mako Robotic Arm Assisted Surgery, please visit their website at patient.stryker.com.